The Legend of the Terrestrial Paradise of Shaddi, the Son of Aid, Part 2. Arabic Folk Tale. A.D. the Greater had two sons, Shadid and Shaddi, and when their father perished they reigned conjointly over the countries after him, and there was no one of the kings of the earth who was not subject to them, and Shaddi the son of A.D. died, so his brother Shaddi ruled alone over the earth after him. He was fond of reading the ancient books, and when he met with the description of the world to come, and of paradise, with its pavilions and lofty chambers, and its trees and fruits, and of the other things in paradise, his heart enticed him to construct its like on the earth, after this manner which hath been above mentioned. He had under his authority a hundred thousand kings, under each of whom were a hundred thousand valiant chieftains, and under each of these were a hundred thousand soldiers. And he summoned them all before him, and said to them, I find in the ancient books and histories the description of the paradise that is in the other world, and I desire to make its like upon the earth. Depart ye therefore to the most pleasant and most spacious vacant tract in the earth, and build for me in it a city of gold and silver, and spread, as its gravel, chrysolites and rubies and pearls, and as the supports of the vaulted roofs of that city make columns of chrysolite, and fill it with pavilions, and over the pavilions construct lofty chambers, and beneath them plant, in the by-streets and great thoroughfare streets, varieties of trees bearing different kinds of ripe fruits, and make rivers to run beneath them in channels of gold and silver. To this they all replied, how can we accomplish that which thou hast described to us, and how can we procure the chrysolites and rubies and pearls that thou hast mentioned? Question mark. But he said, Know ye not that the kings of the world are obedient to me, and under my authority, and that no one who is in it disobeyeth my command? Question mark. They answered, Yes, we know that. Dot depart then, comma, said he, to the mines of chrysolite and ruby, and to the places where pearls are found, and gold and silver and take forth and collect their contents from the earth, and spare no exertions. Take also for me, from the hands of me, such of those things as ye find, and spare none, nor let any escape you, and beware of disobedience! Exclamation mark. He then wrote a letter to each of the kings in the regions of the earth, commanding them to collect all the articles of the kinds above mentioned that their subjects possessed, and to repair to the mines in which these things were found, and extract the precious stones that they contained even from the beds of the seas, and they collected the things that he required in the space of twenty years, after which he sent forth the geometricians and sages, and laborers and artificers, from all the countries and regions, and they dispersed themselves through the deserts and wastes, and tracts and districts, until they came to a desert wherein was a vast open plain, clear from hills and mountains, and in it were springs gushing forth, and rivers running. So they said, this is the kind of place which the king commanded us to seek, and called us to find out they then busied themselves in building the city according to the direction of the king Shaddi, king of the whole earth, in its length and breadth, and they made through it the channels for the rivers, and laid the foundations conformably with the prescribed extent. The kings of the various districts of the earth sent thither the jewels and stones, and large and small pearls, and carnelian and pure gold, upon camels over the deserts and wastes, and sent great ships with them over the seas, and a quantity of those things, such as cannot be described nor calculated nor defined, was brought to the workmen, who labored in the construction of this city three hundred years. And when they had finished it, they came to the king and acquainted him with the completion, and he said to them, Depart, and make around it impregnable fortifications of great height, and construct around the circuit of the fortifications a thousand pavilions, each with a thousand pillars beneath it, in order that there may be in each pavilion a vizier. So they went immediately, and did this in twenty years, after which they presented themselves before Shaddi, and informed him of the accomplishment of his desire. He therefore ordered his viziers, who were a thousand in number, and his chief officers, and such of his troops and others as he confided in, to make themselves ready for departure, and to prepare themselves for removal to Iramzat el md in attendance upon the king of the world, Shaddi the son of A.D. He ordered also such as he chose of his women and his harem, as his female slaves and his eunuchs, to fit themselves out, and they passed twenty years in equipping themselves. Then Shaddi proceeded with his troops, rejoiced at the accomplishment of his desire, until there remained between him and Iram Zat L and D one day's journey, when God sent down upon him and upon the obstinate infidels who accompanied him a loud cry from the heaven of his power, and it destroyed them all by the vehemence of its sound. 
neither Sheddi nor any of those who were with him arrived at the city, or came inside of it, and God obliterated the traces of the road that led to it, but the city remaineth as it was in its place until the hour of the judgment exclamation mark. At this narrative, related by Cobb el Br, Moiah wondered, and he said to him, Can any one of mankind arrive at that city? Question mark yes, comma, answered Cobb el Br, a man of the companions of Muhammad, upon whom be blessing and peace, in appearance like this man who is sitting here, without any doubt. S. Shabi also saith, It is related, on the authority of the learned men of Hemire, in El Yemen, that when Sheddi and those who were with him were destroyed by the loud cry, his son Sheddi the less reigned after him, for his father, Sheddi the greater, had left him a successor to his kingdom, in the land of Hadram T and Saba, on his departure with the troops who accompanied him to Iram Zad L M D, and as soon as the news reached him of the death of his father, on the way before his arrival at the city of Iram, he gave orders to carry his father's body from those desert tracks to Hadram T, and to excavate the sepulchre for him in a cavern. And when they had done this, he placed his body in it, upon a couch of gold, and covered the corpse with seventy robes, interwoven with gold and adorned with precious jewels, and he placed at his head a tablet of gold, whereon were inscribed these verses colon, Be admonished, O thou who art deceived by a prolonged life. I am Shed D, the son of A D, the lord of a strong fortress, the lord of power and might, and of excessive valor. The inhabitants of the earth have obeyed me, fearing my severity and threats, and I held the east and west under a strong dominion. And a preacher of the true religion invited us to the right way, but we opposed him, and said, is there no refuge from it? And a loud cry assaulted us from a tract of the distant horizon, whereupon we fell down like corn in the midst of a plain at harvest, and now, beneath the earth, we await the threatened day. Eth the Libby also saith, It happened that two men entered this cavern, and found at its upper end some steps, and having descended these, they found an excavation, the length whereof was a hundred cubits, and its breadth forty cubits, and its height a hundred cubits and in the midst of this excavation was a couch of gold, upon which was a man of enormous bulk, occupying its whole length and breadth, covered with ornaments and with robes interwoven with gold and silver, and at his head was a tablet of gold, whereon was an inscription. And they took that tablet, and carried away from the place as much as they could of bars of gold and silver and other things. The End